Here's a short digital adventure with our friends, the Cyber Family. In this episode, Bob receives a malicious email. Meet Bob. Hello, my name is Bob. Bob is a devoted father and a skilled computer engineer. One day, Bob received this email in his inbox. Dear Bob, greetings for you. We regret to inform you that your mobile account may has been compromised. To resolve this issue and to avoid surcharges, please visit us at upstanding.com backslash accounts as soon as you are able. Please resolve this issue immediately to avoid surcharges. Sincerely, the Upstanding Wireless Team. What do you think? Should Bob click on the hyperlink? Before you answer, consider Fishing Phil. <sighs> Fishing Phil spends his time thinking of ways to trick internet users into revealing their usernames, passwords, and other sensitive information. There's also ID Ivan. <laughs> ID Ivan spends his time thinking of ways to collect other people's identification information, especially things like social security numbers and driver's license numbers. Because of people like ID Ivan and Fishing Phil, the answer is no. Bob should not click on that hyperlink. But what if Bob ignores the risks and clicks on it anyway? What could happen? It's possible that when Bob clicks on the link, it could take him to a counterfeit web page. This web page looks just like the real upstanding wireless homepage. The only difference is the URL, which almost always tips us off with counterfeit web pages. Uh. Fishing Phil built this counterfeit page to harvest usernames and passwords. If Bob submits this information, he's really just sending it straight to Fishing Phil's computer. Here's another counterfeit page. This one was built by ID Ivan to harvest identification information. If Bob submits this information, he's really just sending it to ID Ivan. So what should Bob have done with this email instead of clicking on it? Well, there are at least three good options. He could visit his wireless company's webpage by typing their URL into his browser himself, rather than by clicking on a hyperlink. He could throw the email away because it just looks suspicious to him, or he could call his wireless company and ask them if they sent the email. If Bob has the time, calling is probably the best option. If he calls, Bob might alert the company to the scam, and the company might be able to help other unsuspecting customers to avoid it. This time, Bob saw the risks, and it saved him a big headache. 